Hey guys, I'm John Fryer. Welcome to Fryer Funds. Welcome to my kitchen. And welcome to the Fryer Feast series. In this series, we took $15,000. We're investing it into individual companies with all investment decisions made over the weekend to be executed on Monday. This is for people who work nine to five, who don't have time to trade during the week or make decisions during the week. So we focus on the weekend execution and go from there. Now, I want to point out, this is not financial advice, this is not legal advice, consult your own advisors, and make your own decisions. But, with that said, let's dive in, see what happened this week, and where we're going from here. Hey guys, so, super short and simple this week, I think. Uh, so let's kind of take a look. Uh, we are down this week, and we're actually under 20,000 again, down to 19.7. Um, but yeah, we're going to keep it short and simple. So the S&P 500 sold off this week. We'll talk about that here in a minute. And the Friar Feast was down as well, almost as much, just a little bit better. Um, the limit sales we had in place to take profits on these all kind of kicked in. Um, the one that's kind of inconvenient is Play, Dave & Buster's. They're actually currently sitting above $18. The rest of these are about where that price is, so that's not too bad. But that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted to take some cash off the sideline for these for big bump ups. Um, so I'll talk about that here in a minute. So S&P 500 announced what's gonna happen Friday afternoon. And a lot of people were expecting Tesla to get in and it didn't. And I actually half expected Zoom to get in, uh, which I talked about in my last video about Zoom going to the moon. Um, they're not getting in either, but one that is getting in that I didn't see coming mostly because I didn't even uh, realize they had gotten that big was Etsy, which is in our portfolio. So Etsy is getting added to the S&P 500. So I'm expecting a big move up on Etsy. So that'll be nice because we own a share of that. Uh, but yeah, so let's talk about kind of this last week and where we're at. So this last week we had a massive sell off rotation uh, out of tech and into a lot of the recovery stocks. Um, Unfortunately, it kind of bounced back towards the end of Friday. So mid-morning Friday, it was down a lot, and a lot of companies are back to levels they were at in June and July for their floor resistance. If you look back at the char charts, they were trading at uh, June-July levels. Uh, well, they bounced back up, and now they're back to maybe a month off uh, August levels, and they're kind of like right in the middle of all the trend lines and all the averages, like a lot of... A lot of traders or investors like to follow a 200-day average or a 50-day average or the MACD, if you've heard of that, or uh, regression channels. All of them are like right in the middle or right on touching the average, which could be a floor, could be a ceiling. We really don't know. We're like right right at the tip of the middle. Um, now, part of that is because we're so overweighted on tech. Apple's gone up a lot, Microsoft, Google. Um, there's like five companies, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and Facebook, that are like 25% of the S&P 500. So it could be that we'll continue to see a downtrend in the S&P 500 with all these mega cap tech stocks going down and all of the other ones that have run up, like Zoom, um, they, they'll go down, although Zoom's not in the S&P 500, so it wouldn't have an effect, but they'll go down, causing the S&P 500 to drag, even though things like banks cruise lines, airlines, and them continue to recover. So going over the portfolio and where things are at, we're, we've got a good cast position, um, a little bit more than we had last week, but everything in our portfolio, nothing has a great price that I'm like, we should buy right here with whatever happens tomorrow. Uh, today is Monday, Labor Day, September 7th, September 7th, yes. Um, so I'm just going to leave it alone. So we're positioned well, everything's kind of at that mid price point. A couple things are a little bit on sale, a couple things still a little high. We could take profits maybe on Apple, maybe lower our price target or price cost basis on Chegg. But mm, just looking at the charts and where they're at, and I didn't have a lot of time this weekend because it's a holiday weekend and took a break uh, to really make any decisions. So when it comes to situations like this, the best thing to do is to trust your portfolio with where you're at and just leave it alone. So um, we also could put in buy and limit sales based on the charts and be like, okay, we're gonna buy, if things start to drop off, we want it to buy uh, at say $19 for Dropbox or something like that, right? Uh, like we did with the sales of all the recovery stocks. Well, I don't know how things are gonna move and I don't wanna be caught. 
So we're just going to leave it alone. We'll leave the limit cells that we have in place um, on the recovery stocks for now in case they do spike up to it. But otherwise, no changes. Friar Feast will stay the same this weekend. And we'll see kind of what happens with this shorter week, Tuesday through Friday. Um, hopefully next week we've got a much better idea and clearer picture of what's going to happen or what is happening. Uh, my honest hope in a lot of ways is that we have a massive sell-off and we get oversold back down to reasonable levels that everything is just on sale again like it was back in March. Obviously not to those levels. If we get down that low in a week, it'd be really bad. But um, I hope a lot of things do sell off. We have a good opportunity to put the cash we have to work. And so the, for the next few months, we just have a massive increase and in, increase the portfolio another 30% in a few months. But we'll see. Um, this massive run-up has kind of been unexpected. So I don't know. We're just going to leave it alone and see what happens next week or this week. So anyway, we'll talk to you guys next week. Down in the description, uh, this will be uh, linked in, down in the description along with the spreadsheet if you want to see where we are at and if you're starting a new position or a new portfolio if you don't own anything always great to get started but we already have positions so that's why i'm not changing anything so the spreadsheet's down in the description along with this a link to webull where, you, where you'll now get one free stock they changed it but it can be worth up to 1600 and then Robinhood, which is a little bit easier to use but less advanced there's a link there for free stock or get started with m1 finance or acorns and get a free 10 or $5 there. But that's all I've got. We'll talk to you guys next week.